So chapter four is all about calculations and chemical equations. We're first gonna learn how to calculate the molar mass of a chemical equation. It's also called formula mass, um, sometimes uh, molecular weight. So in order to do this, we're going to take the sum of the atomic masses of all the atoms represented. So the only thing you need to calculate molar mass is the chemical formula. So as you can see, um, I have some examples of chemical formulas here. H2O, CuCl2, C6H6. So what these subscripts are um, telling us are how many atoms of that element are present in the chemical compound. So the subscript gives us the numbers of each atom present. So we're going to use that number, that subscript, in conjunction with the atomic mass that we can find on the periodic table to calculate the molar mass of the chemical formula. So let's look at an example. In this example, we have the chemical formula of CH CL3. So to calculate the molar mass of that compound, we're going to make a list of each element present, in this case, carbon, hydrogen, chlorine. We are then going to write next to each of those elements how many of each element are present. So for carbon, there is no number after carbon, so we assume that there's just one atom of carbon. The same goes for hydrogen. As for chlorine, there is a subscript of three after the chlorine. So that means there are three atoms of chlorine present. The next column, we are going to look up each of those elements on the periodic table and figure out what their atomic mass is. So for carbon, it is 12.01, hydrogen 1.008, and then chlorine 35.45. Notice we are multiplying across the number of atoms by the atomic mass for each element present and then adding those totals together to get the total molecular mass of the compound. When we calculate the molar mass of the compound, the units are grams per mole. This is going to help us do conversions later when we need to convert between grams and moles of a substance. So let's look at what a mole is, um, define it using Avogadro's number. So a mole is just the SI unit for the amount of a substance. It was devised by chemists so that we can count how many particles are present in a certain amount. For instance, if I had five grams of copper, using Avogadro's number, I could figure out exactly how many atoms of copper were present in that five grams. We do this by defining the mole by Avogadro's number, which is one mole is going to be equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Notice we have the word particles after that giant number. Okay, notice that 10 to the 23rd, that's saying we take this decimal point and we are moving it 23 times to the right. So it's a very, very large number. Now the word particles is present because particles can actually be atoms, molecules, and formula units. It just depends upon what we're talking about. So if we are talking about an element, for instance, that word particles becomes atoms because elements are made up of atoms. If we are talking about a covalent compound, the term particles is gonna to change to molecules. If we are talking about an ionic compound, the term particles will change into formula units. So let's look at how we're going to use this in a calculation. Now, it looks a little scary because it's such a big number. So I wanted to apply it um, because this number, this one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is actually very similar to the word dozen, okay? So what does dozen mean? So let's look at that. Dozen means 12, 12 of something. Now dozen can be applied to several different things. It doesn't just have to be applied to eggs because that's usually how we think it. I have a dozen eggs. What does that mean? I have 12 eggs. You can also apply it though to pencils, you say you have a dozen pencils, you have 12 pencils. Dozen donuts, 12 donuts, okay? So we're gonna use this definition of what dozen means in our calculations. So for example, if we wanna calculate how many eggs are in three dozen, 
what we're going to do is we're going to take the number three and we're going to multiply it by what the word dozen means. And what the word dozen means is 12. So we're simply taking three times 12. And what that tells us is how many eggs are in three dozen? The calculation gives us 36 eggs. Now we can apply it the same way, but using Avogadro's number. So in the next question, how many atoms are in three moles? So in order to figure that out, all we're going to do is take that number three and then multiply it by what the word moles means. And what does moles mean? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So multiplying those by each other will give us the number of atoms present in three moles. Okay, so looking at the mole once again, how it's equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 entities. Now remember, entities can be atoms, molecules, or formula units. It all depends upon what you're looking at. Are you looking at elements? Well, then it's atom. Are you looking at molecules? Well, then you're it's a covalent compound. Uh, formula units then would be an ionic compound. So this is how we're going to apply these calculations. Just a quick reminder, giving um, more specific examples in changing the word entities. If I have one mole of carbon, since carbon's an element, if I was going to calculate that using Avogadro's number, it would be atoms. So carbon's an element, so atoms would be what entities becomes. For one mole of water this time, now looking at water, it's a covalent compound. It has two nonmetals present. Two nonmetals, covalent compound, so entities becomes molecules. Last but not least, we have sodium chloride. What's sodium chloride? We have a metal and a nonmetal, so it must be ionic. So if it's ionic, formula units. Here's a quick flowchart of some of the calculations we're going to be using. Now this flowchart is not given to you on exams. Um, however, it's going to help us initially figure out what steps we need to go through in order to convert from one thing to the next. So you'll notice from this flowchart that we go between mass, moles, and atoms or molecules. Okay, so notice we cannot get straight from mass to atoms. We're always going to have to go through the mole section first. All right, so to go between mass and moles, we're going to need the atomic or molar mass. So that's why we learned how to calculate it at the beginning of this chapter, because we're going to be using that to get between mass and moles. That's why the units on molar mass is grams per mole. We're going to use that as a conversion factor to go between grams and moles. To get now, look at the next step between moles and atoms, we are now using Avogadro's number because Avogadro's number says one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So we're using Avogadro's number now as a conversion factor to go between moles and atoms. All right, so this calculation here, how many moles of water are in 30? how many moles of water are in 35 grams of water. So in order to figure that out, let me go back to the previous slide. Oh, I guess I can't go back to the previous slide. So in order to figure that out, we need molar mass because we just looked on the previous slide. We saw that if you had grams and you wanted to get to moles, you needed the molar mass to do that. So that's what this calculation here is showing. It's showing the calculation of the molar mass of water, two atoms of water, 1.008 being the molecular mass on the periodic table, and then one atom of oxygen with a mass of 16. So adding that together, we get the total molar mass. Notice the units are grams per mole. So this is going to be a conversion factor. Start with what's given in the problem, the 35 grams of water. Use the molar mass as a conversion factor, having grams on bottom to cancel leaving you with just moles. And yes, this is the incorrect um, number of sig figs. So I want you to note that is my mistake. All right, let's look at the next one. How many molecules of I2 are in 
40 grams of I2. So once again, we're starting at grams like in the previous problem. But notice this time we are going all the way to molecules. We said that we could not go from grams straight to molecules. So we need to go to moles first like we did in the previous one and then we'll go to molecules. So to do this, we need two pieces of information. To go from grams to moles, we're going to need the molar mass of I2. So we're going to have to calculate that just like we did in the previous problem with water. We are also going to need Avogadro's number, which is one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. The molar mass and Avogadro's number are going to be our two conversion factors that are going to convert, convert that 40 grams all the way to molecules. So looking at the setup of the railroad tracks, you start with what's given in the problem, the 40 grams. This next step here, this is the molar mass of I2. Notice it's grams per mole. You put the gram portion on the bottom so that they cancel and the moles on top. At this step, you are now in moles. So you then use Avogadro's number, putting the mole portion on the bottom so that moles and moles cancel and the molecule portion on the top. So multiplying across and dividing what's on the bottom and you get 9.48 times 10 to the 22. Now that times 10 to the 22, that's an important part of the number. That is saying that this is a very large number, that you have a lot of those molecules. So do not forget that times 10 to the 22. That's an important part. It's telling you it's a big number. All right, so let's look at mole ratios. Mole ratios, um, we've actually done this before already, we just uh, haven't applied it in this way. So when we talked about chemical formulas before, we said that the subscripts after each element tells us how many atoms of that element are present. Okay. Well, it also tells us the ratio. So I could say, using this chemical formula, there are six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, six atoms of oxygen. I can also say, there are six moles of carbon, 12 moles of hydrogen, and six moles of oxygen. It applies in the same way as if they were atoms, okay? So the subscripts are going to tell us what the ratio is. So it's a six to 12 to six ratio, or if you reduce it down, one to two to one. So for every one mole of carbon I have, I need two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. All right. So how are we going to use this? Well, it's easy to figure out the mole ratio when you have one mole of the compound. So I'm looking at this first example here. If I have one mole of that entire compound, then I'm just using the subscripts to figure out how many atoms of each element I need, right? So if I have one mole of that entire compound, that means I have 12 of carbon, because that's the subscript on carbon, 22 of hydrogen, and 11 of oxygen, okay? Well, if I needed more than one mole, so now say I need two moles of that compound. Well, how do I figure out the moles of each element that I need? What you're doing is you're taking the coefficient, so this number two, and you're multiplying it by each subscript in that chemical formula. So two times 12 will tell me that I need 24 moles of carbon. Two times 22 will tell me that I need 44 moles of hydrogen. Two times 11 tells me I need 22 moles of oxygen. All right, well, what if I need less than two moles? What if I need 0.2? You do it the same way we did the previous one. You take this coefficient, this 0.2, and you're gonna multiply it by each subscript to figure out how many moles you need of each element present in that chemical formula. So taking the point two, multiplying it by 12 will help you figure out how many moles of carbon you need. Taking that point two, multiplying it by 22 to figure out hydrogens gives you 4.4. Last but not least, that point two times 11 tells you how many oxygens. All right. There's an example problem down here that we did in class. Um, go ahead and try it again, get a little practice with that. 
using 1.8 moles of the same compound calculate the number of atoms. So remember, you're just taking this 1.8 moles and multiplying it by the subscript of each element present. All right, so these problems here, um, I'm going to try to post a video of me working these problems out um, on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. So stay tuned for that and um, hopefully that will help you figure these problems out and be able to do the homework and some of these problems on your own. I'll also be posting some videos of um, other instructors, other YouTube videos uh, converting from grams to moles. I already have some of those up. So.